apparently Sneeko goes on Britney Simmons show and uh Sneeko brings on this feminist. All right, so let's just see Sneeko and his new girl that he found on Just Pearly Things channel interviewed by Britney Simmons. Go ahead, tell me. Yeah, it just it just gives me a headache talking to these people, but um Danya is a woman who makes sense. Okay, and, uh, I'm excited Danya about that. How did you guys meet? We met on the show yesterday. Like yeah. literally yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, here's to new friendships, I guess. Okay, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. How old are you? Well, tell us how both how old you both are. I'm 24 and uh, you're Danny's 22. 22. 22. Okay, awesome. So I wanted to have you on the podcast, Nico. And of course, I'm happy you're here as well. I want to talk about being exceptional. It's come up a lot. And I think because of where you're at in the world, I would argue that you are quite exceptional. But I know a lot of people don't want to think that of you. And so I wanted to ask you, why do you think people have a hard time seeing you as exceptional? I think a lot of people have their own agenda and they have a, a lot of ego. I think social media has done that. And we see it like in the podcast we were on yesterday. Everybody wants to be that voice of truth and thinks that they know everything. And I don't think people are willing to put themselves in a, in a vulnerable situation to be completely honest. People mm -hmm. don't like being wrong. People don't like being curious. And I, I think I add something to the social media space that's pretty uncommon when it comes to being curious and uh, open-minded and being extremely honest. And I, I've been doing it for so long. I don't really come on acting like I know everything. I come on... Um, with a, no, no, no. Ego I mean, does come off acting like he knows everything, but what he's saying is important is that he takes a lot of risk. Like he, even if he's wrong, he'll come out with like a strong personality, a lot of charisma, and then he, and then you know, sometimes you'll see him concede. He'll be like, "All right, cool. Like I, I see this perspective. I, I understand that perspective now." Mindset of seeking, of seeking truth, which is rare, and right. I think people, I, I think a lot of it is jealousy, uh, and also mm -hmm. a lot of it is also arrogance and a lack of understanding um but this is why i like what you do is that you come in with a lot of uh, empathy and not fake empathy which is what i think a lot of women do now uh they, they a lot of times they can be patronizing in the way that they talk to men mm. um and we saw it on the show last night there's uh the, the uh, way they talk to men says the rp is something nobody in the real world seems to know wtf it is i asked a bunch of young people with jobs last weekend no, but the RP RP is spreading a lot. There are actually a lot of people in the restaurant industry, especially if you're in New York City. I mean, ask a guy about Andrew Tate. A lot of guys will delve deeper and deeper into the red pill. Uh, the RP is a result of men comparing and sharing notes. The RP is a result of men's collective lived experiences and observations. Thank you, Dr. Durden. Exactly. Most people are plugged into the matrix, a web of lies and indoctrination to ensure voluntary slavery. You see, and, and that's the thing is most people that don't, really watch the red pill they, they they lack critical thinking skills they just swallow whatever the social media gives them they don't want to think about it and that's why they spend a lot of time regretting all the things they scroll through because they're like i couldn't apply any of this shit to my life but when you scroll through the red pill page right at first you might find yourself very upset but then once you start to realize oh actually all this shit is true all these things these guys are saying are true how can I improve it? Where can I find the solutions? That that that's when you go when you surpass the red pill and you're like, oh damn, okay, I've taken it, I've accepted the truth. Now I must embrace it. Oh, do this fake empathy thing where they'll be like, Oh, do you know how to fight? And then I'm like, Yeah, I know I know how to fight. Oh, okay, that's good. That's it's like you have to <laughs> yeah. qualify. It's like, oh, you're not a little bitch. Like, oh, you can you're like a big boy, huh? And it's yeah. it's not and they act like it's empathetic and understanding because they'll be like, oh, that's really good. Oh, you're like a rumbler. Like you, you're like, you're like exceptional. Okay. That's whatever. They're kind of gay, but still that's the way that they talk. And, and it's, it's not really empathetic. It's not, it doesn't come from a place of understanding. It comes from a place of competition. Mm. Do you, because one of the things I struggle with, especially when I start to express, you know, interest in different people's belief systems and how people do things. I See, book your mama right now. You're saying, um, book your mama. That's a broad statement, Durden. It's a tribe and a cult, right? Okay, cool. Fine. The red pill is a, a, is a tribe and a cult. Andrew Tate's followers are a tribe and a cult. Would you say that, you know, people that follow Biden, are they a tribe and a cult? Would you say that, you know, people that follow liberals openly are a tribe and a cult? Would you say destiny stream is a tribe and a cult? Like, You know, is is it such a bad thing that people get together and have open conversations and discourse about certain subjects that society's not willing to touch on? 
And then literally the only solution or the, the, the most prominent solution that's given in the RP space is men improve yourselves. Men get better. Men, you must become men. Stop pussyfooting around. Put your foot down. Focus. Take your attention back and understand women by bettering yourself first. Give them less attention because the more attention you give them, the more you are creeping them out and losing them. So put, take all that attention back and put it towards improving yourself. That's, that, if, if that's a cult and that's so wrong, then I'm signed up and I'm subscribed, bro. <laughs> I guess I see like parts of people I know in you so I can humanize you very easily or I'm like, oh yeah, like I know people who have this mindset or I know people just like this and they're really good people. And so from from knowing people similar to you, I'm like, well, I know they're good. And then I've talked to you a little bit. And I know you're good. And I know you have the best intentions. But do you think that it's ideology that really makes people think you have bad intentions? Or is there some part of you that secretly does have bad intentions? I don't have bad intentions. And it's not just ideology. And I think the, the reason that you understand it is because probably the people that... I like, I like how we just said that. He's like, it's not a, just an ideology. It's observable truth. talking about are, are they younger than you? Uh, yeah, they can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you are understanding is when I come from when I sound aggressive or when I mm. sound straightforward, people will get off put by that. They're like, why is this guy like yelling at me? Like, calm yeah. down. Yesterday we did the show and, and this girl said that I was vibrating with misogyny. And I've never heard that before. He's like, your vibrations are misogynistic. And it's, it's tr I've never heard that in my life, which I thought was extremely stupid. But I, I do understand it because there's people with the same ideology as me, mm. but they come off and they explain it in a different way and I, yeah. I come on pretty hard-headed and aggressive and debate style and loud which people they see it as like a personal attack people get really mm -hmm. off put by that i've noticed in my life that uh people always explain to me that the way i'm speaking is off-putting to people but i think that you kind of see past that and, and you don't really consider that um as aggressive as other people do uh, which i could probably do better at, at articulating myself in that way to get through to more people. I, I can understand why women would say mm. that I'm vibrating with misogyny. But And, and isn't that what Andrew Tate ultimately did? He kind of dialed back a little bit. He got the initial spike up in views, right? By like saying all the controversial polarizing things. And then he kind of turned it around, marketing himself different. Like, you know what? I got to change. I got to change the way I'm speaking about things. Let me just change the frame and see if I can get people to really understand while still keeping the tonality, while still keeping some level of polarization, just to make, just, just to ring you in and then get you to understand what men are going through in society that's not, that's not talked about and how it's not something that we want to bitch about, something that we just want to, we want to take a different angle to be able to um, get you to understand, which is women. Right. Um, Dr. Durden says the RP is not an ideology. It is a praxology, a moving and evolving result of real life experimentation and result observation. Boom. There you go. Shout out Rolo. Uh, Red pill is nothing new. It's just in a new package and it's not 100% correct. Nothing is 100% correct. In the 70s, it was called Macho Man. 80s mods versus rockers. It's true. I mean, this is definitely repackaged. <laughs> the red pill comes from the matrix, right? But it's just it's just a different way to um, wrap up the praxology, right? It, you're, you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. And there's there's always been in the 70s called a macho man. But again, technology wasn't around as much that day, those days. And, you know, there were different there, there were different problems in that society, you know, in that time. But it, it they were different. Uh, like the problems were spoken about very differently, but all the things that the RP space talks about, right? Those things have just ha always happened. All decisions people make are based in reality and observable truths. You can look back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, right? To today, men and women have essentially still selected the partner the same way. 